we begin with the definition of a limit. And this definition is really very notation driven. And so what we're gonna look at is uh, what we say the limit is x approaches c of a function f of x is equal to l. So the limit here is l. And so what we're seeing, um, or what we're saying when we see this notation is that as x gets close to c, Um, the function y equals f of x um, is going to get close to L. And generally, we're thinking of C and L as just numbers, values, real numbers, but they could also be plus or minus infinity. And so um, what we're really doing in this um, introduction here is just getting the idea of what a limit is. And so really here, when we're talking about getting close to, we're going to formalize that um, as we move forward. But for now, we're just trying to visualize what it means to get close to. So what we're really looking at here, um, we can show kind of in a picture to get an initial idea. Um, perhaps we have a function maybe that looks like this. Let's say that's our function f of x. Now that's a really nice function. It's a continuous function, maybe polynomial-like. But see, we have this c value. Um, it'll just be kind of, it's, it's an x value, a number on the x-axis there. And see, if we were to look up here at the function, that function corresponds to this y value. Um, and that y value is L. And we're saying that it gets close to it because as uh, x gets close to c, so as we're looking really from both sides of c, our function is getting close to this value here at L. But like I said, uh, c and L don't have to be finite numbers. They don't have to um, be just real numbers. We can include the idea of plus or minus infinity. And so to give you kind of a sense of what we're talking about when we throw in infinity, um, let's first kind of replace c with infinity. So when we say the limit is x goes to infinity of the function, we're talking about as x moves off um, in the positive direction, so off to the right there indefinitely, our function goes to um, l. And so as an example here, let's just think about L as a, um, as a number, a value there. So what we could have here is a function that's going to approach that value L. So notice what we have going on is this horizontal asymptote here. And that would happen really if we were talking about the function going off to negative infinity, or as x goes off to negative infinity, the function approaches L too. Um, it would just be a horizontal asymptote there on the left-hand side. So we're looking at horizontal asymptotes whenever the function as x goes to either plus or minus infinity approaches a number and not one of the infinities. So now for the second example, let's see what if we replace L with infinity. So we're talking about a finite C here. Let's let C be right in here. And we say that the function goes off to infinity when X is getting close to C. So what that's doing then is it's saying that our function here, as we approach C from both the left side and the right side really, um, our function is uh, going off to infinity. And so we see there, in that case, we have a vertical asymptote. So if we're looking at x going to a number and the function either going to plus or minus infinity, um, we've got a vertical asymptote. And we'll get into those details a little bit more as we move forward, but just to kind of get a sense of what we're looking at. So now what does it look like if both of them are replaced with infinity? As x goes to infinity, so we're looking there at the x-axis, our function values go off to infinity, so we'd be looking at the y-axis. And so what we have here would be perhaps a case where this is the arrow we're looking at. As x goes off to infinity, so does the function, and that would be an example of such a function.